Artin Shaw is speaker number six, and his title for the three-minute thesis, How Does Life Sense Gravity? When we left Earth and explored space for the first time, astronauts came back with some problems. Some of them were easy to understand. Our bones are used to carrying our weight, and when we're weightless, they experienced less force. They became brittle and soft from disuse. But other health problems were harder to understand. NASA estimates that if we send a crew to Mars, a quarter of them will come back blind prematurely from cataracts. Some of the healthiest people we can find on the planet have already come back with prostate cancer at higher rates than we expect and higher than can be explained by the extra radiation of space. There has to be some missing factor, and NASA thought maybe that missing factor is gravity. Maybe there's something about low gravity that our body is not good at, and if we could better understand that, we could improve the safety of space travel, and for those of us back home, maybe we can open up some new options for treatment. But sending experiments to space costs a fortune. We will never be able to ask all the questions we want to ask. So we came up with a way to change gravity here on Earth. For low gravity, if you are constantly spinning, so there's no consistent up or down, you experience up or down equally in all directions. And this cancels out a lot of the effects of normal gravity. NASA has been using devices like this for decades to use cell cultures to look at low gravity. With a couple tweaks, we could put in whole developing fish. And the reason whole developing fish are so important is they're much more relevant than just clumps of cells for human health and disease. So for high gravity, we want to look at high gravity in the lab as well so we can see if it's the opposite of whatever we find in low gravity. So I built a custom centrifuge. It's nothing fancy. It's a fan, a ceiling fan, turned upside down. And we have some adapters that we 3D printed. And we can put tubes of water on the ends of the blade of fan. And in the tubes, we can put our fish. And so when the fan is spinning fast enough, we have extra forces on the fish. And that adds up with gravity to give more forces. What we're starting to find is that the fish develop differently, and their cells communicate differently in different gravity. When they're in low gravity, they have more variation. They have more changes. It's like having more typos. And this might go part of the way to explain why some of the astronauts have some of these health effects if the messages that cells send to each other are less consistent. We see just the opposite in higher gravity, where they're sending more consistent messages. What we think we're starting to get to is a picture of how cells communicate to each other more complex than we thought. And I don't have all the answers yet. What I do have is the tools to finally ask these questions. And what I find most beautiful about this work so far is that we are not so different from those fish who didn't realize they were in water. They just took it for granted that they were always in water. And we took gravity for granted. It is only by leaving Earth that we learned more about life on Earth. Thank you.